In this video, we're gonna go over ISO. Now, do you know what that stands for? Because I sure didn't. But in this video, we're gonna go over it and what it means. Will Simpson here and welcome to Exploring Photography. Today we're tackling the final camera setting and that's ISO. Now this might be a shorter video because ISO is actually very simple, but nonetheless, it is still very important to understand so you can use your camera to its full potential. So what is it and what does it stand for? Well, ISO is simply the sensitivity of your sensor in your camera to light exposed to it. That's all there is to it. What does it stand for? Well, there's an organization that sets international standards and they were the one that created the meter that measures the sensitivity to light. Thus, ISO. Fairly simple, really doesn't have anything to do with it, but that's where the name comes from. This setting differs from aperture and shutter speed because ISO is simply the sensitivity to the light. Aperture and shutter are mechanisms that will actually allow physical light into the camera. If you were to close your aperture and your shutter completely and raise your ISO really high, it would make no difference because there's no light. ISO doesn't create light, it digitally enhances the light allowed into your camera. So that's one thing to really remember. ISO affects your clarity, your dynamic range, and your color accuracy. Now what are those? Well, clarity is the sharpness, the cleanness of your image. Dynamic range is how many colors from true black to true white your camera can pick up. The more, the better. And color accuracy is A equals A of color. If you're outside and you take a picture of a tree, now if the tree leaves were a dark green and your camera picks them up as a light green, that would probably not be good color accuracy. ISO helps maintain color accuracy. The better your ISO, the better the color accuracy will be. The lower your ISO, the better your clarity, dynamic range, and color accuracy will be. As you raise your ISO, you're gonna lose clarity, you're gonna lose dynamic range, and you're gonna lose color accuracy, which will in turn result in noise. Noise is when you look at an image and it seems kind of fuzzy, it's got color imperfections, dots here and there, that's noise. And that's usually a high ISO, which causes those imperfections. Compare it to a microphone. If you were to, let's say, record a whisper or a really quiet sound, you have to raise the sensitivity of the mic to pick it up. But in turn, you're actually gonna pick up all those environmental noises that you may not necessarily be able to hear, and you might get static, or you might get other kinds of noises and things like that, making an imperfect audio file. Now, it's the same thing with ISO. The higher you raise your ISO, the more imperfections you're gonna get, the more noise you're gonna get, the more your, your picture is not gonna be as clear, and the clarity is going down, the sharpness is going down. It's the same concept, so just remember that. The lowest ISO that your camera can set is the base ISO. This is where your camera is gonna operate the best, with the best clarity, the best dynamic range, and the best color accuracy. So I always try and operate my camera at the base ISO. It's always the last setting that I adjust. I adjust all of the other settings, then the ISO, and that way I can get the lowest ISO when taking pictures. It's as simple as this. Low ISO, low light, but better quality image, higher ISO, more light, simply the sensitivity to the light, but a lower quality image. Now, I always try and use a lower ISO. However, sometimes you need a higher ISO. For example, night photography. If you're trying to catch pictures of the stars, you need as much light as possible. You use a long shutter, you have a wide open aperture or a low f-stop, like 2.8 or something, to allow the most light, but you still need a higher sensitivity to the light so your sensor can pick up those little pinpricks of stars. So that's when you use a high ISO. I try and go around 3200 is about the max that I wanna go for my specific camera, and I'm using a Canon 6D. Let's say you're indoors and you wanna freeze motion. Well, that's where a high ISO comes in handy because if you wanna freeze motion, remember, you need a high shutter. With a high shutter, you're gonna let a lot less light in. So you need to balance that with a higher ISO so it's more sensitive, so your camera can get the proper exposure. You just kinda have to play around with it and figure out how to use your ISO along with the other settings. My personal preference is to set all the other settings first and then adjust the ISO to balance them out. That way I always get the lowest ISO that I can. And that's all there is to ISO. Higher ISO is a lower quality image but more light. Lower ISO is a better quality image but less light. And it's as simple as it is. That's why I always set 
my ISO last. That way, for the situation that I'm in, I can get the best quality image. Now, that's all there is to it. I hope you learned something. I really do because ISO is pretty simple, so you probably understood most of this. But if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, and uh, I'll see you next time, guys. Have a good one. Well, there's a company that sets international standards for different things. So what is it and what does it stand for? Where? So what is it and so what is it and blah, 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 blah. So what is it and what does it do? You're, you take a picture. If your camera's color act, this is jeez. <laughs> it's amazing how hard it is to say a very simple thing. Doop -a -doop -a -doo. I think I'll get it at some point. Maybe I can say it the right way. Okay. Great quality image, but less light. I'm gonna sneeze. Yep. Maybe. Anybody else make this face when they're about to sneeze? Damn, that's unfortunate. Okay, moving on.